Credit Karma said enough is enough. I got a 750. So I'm trying to see how I'm not going to get approved. Sir, 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 who told you that? Well, Credit Karma. You said Credit Karma? Now, I know many of you all have been talking bad about Credit Karma for years. Hey, yeah, I'm looking what? at your credit score right here. Uh, it's a nine. What, what can I get with the nine, then? Sir, the only thing you can get is off the phone. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's about it. But now you can finally buy a home using your Credit Karma score. You've said that you can open up mortgage lending to how many more millions of Americans? So we score about 40 million more people. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the major changes that's not only happening in the mortgage industry, but also in the credit score industry as well. Starting in the third quarter of this year, 2024, you will now be able to use the same exact scoring model that Credit Karma and so many other platforms use to actually go into homeownership. Now, I know some of you all are thinking, oh, no, Calvin, that's not true at all. I know some of y'all going to say that. Let me show you. Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, those are the big three credit bureaus, explain their role in my Vantage score. Well, they give us strategic direction, uh, and we have access to a large, large amounts of data, uh, anonymous data, and funding and capital. So we're going to be around for a long time. So there's an advantage there. However, uh, we're very careful about antitrust issues. They cannot tell us what to do every day. Uh, and uh, we're independently managed. So we create our own decisions and do our own model development. Right. A lot of people might not know that when those credit bureaus have to d deal with the FICO score, they're dealing with a, an independent company, Fair Isaac Company, a company that's done extremely well, by the way. Their stock is up like 500 percent, six times over in just the past five years. Are you effectively trying to end FICO's monopoly on my credit score? And, and why? what impact will this have on people trying to get a mortgage? So to your first question about ending a monopoly, we, we want to compete. One of the reasons we started was to compete with FICO, but the market's large enough for both of us and for other market uh, uh, developers, uh, score developers. And so uh, we believe the competition, we come out with more products, uh, more features, more benefits, and have the competition follow us. You've said that you can open up mortgage lending to how many more millions of Americans, you think? So we score about 40 million more people than the uh, uh, other commercially available models, and about 10 million of those are the 620 and above. And I picked the 620 because that's pretty much the minimum for a FHA loan. So those, you're saying that, that you can expand access to 40 million people, and only 10 million of them are in traditional, like the credit-worthy cutoff. At a 620. Right. Uh, and of those 10 million, about 2.4 million are African Americans and Latinos that cannot otherwise get a score. So not all those 10 million will probably be house ready mm -hmm. or, or want to buy a house, but that we're talking about millions more that could qualify. And the way you do this is by needing only about four weeks of activity, whereas FICO traditionally needs about six months to establish a credit score and those kinds of innovations, right? Correct. And as a former lender, you'd say, well, how can you create a score in one month's use, usage? So we tested that data with vast amounts of data, and you guess what? The new scorable score, they're, they're, they're probably a default, which is what a score does, major probability default, is about the same as long-term borrowers. So it's an incredibly accurate score for this. Why, it, we're almost out of time, but why did they flip-flop? Because it looked like FHFA was actually going to make sure that the people couldn't use Advantage score, and then all of a sudden, the last couple months, now they have to consider it. Well, the new director is following the law, and we're very grateful to that. The uh, former director was uh, not following the law in his proposed rule. Now, here's the thing, and honestly, I get it. Many of you all may even have the Credit Karma app, so I can understand the feeling when you go to the dealership and they see a different score. Or if you want to go into home ownership prior to watching this video, then looking at your Credit Karma score, because that's what you have access to, no one else told you exactly how to see your mortgage scores, right? And then you look at that Credit Karma score, then you have that conversation with the mortgage lender, and they're saying, no, whatever you're seeing is not what the scores that we use. And so again, that game is going to be changing. Now, I've been telling people for years that Vantage score is not just some score that a lot of people are just talking about and that banks are not using. For those who don't know, Vantage score has been around for years. It was actually started by all three of the current credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. The whole purpose of them creating this score was to be in direct competition with FICO, which by the way, FICO has never had competition come this close.
Not to mention that every time a financial institution takes a look at your credit score, they have to pay for that score. But if you look at your closing documents, if you've you know, purchased a home before in the past, you'll see that some of you all have been paying for that credit score on average about $95. You see, FICO is really a third party company that has just dominated the industry. No different than when you wipe your nose, you use Kleenex, right? When you digging, you know, when you cleaning out your ears, you're using a Q-tip. You're using a cotton swab. You're not using a Q-tip. They've dominated the industry, right? And so because of that, they're simply saying, well, wait a minute. We've been dealing with this stuff for years because no one else wanted to do the work. No one else wanted to create the algorithm. No one else had the time or took the time to invest in it. But now the credit bureaus are doing something they obviously should have done years ago. But now it's about to change the game. And now all of those years that Vantage Score has been working on that algorithm is finally about to turn into something major. Watch this. Now, here's an article from the ABA Banking Journal. And you can see right here that it says that FHFA officials discuss equitable housing plans for new credit score models. You can also see the date right here says March 20th, 2024. Now I'm going to scroll down to the good stuff that you guys want to know, and I'll go ahead and break it down like this. So it says right here, officials also discuss the transition to the FICO TNT. Now I'm going to pause right here real quick because we just did a video on that. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out as we break down the changes that's going to be coming with the FICO TNT, how that's going to affect you if you have trade lines and a lot more. And the Vantage Score 4.0 credit score models, as well as the move from requiring three credit reports down to two credit reports for single family loans. Now let's pause right here real quick. I hope you guys understand what you just read. This means that they will no longer be requiring three credit bureaus to give scores in order for you to qualify for home ownership. Now, this is only if you're looking to purchase a single family home, which is, of course, most of the majority of the inventory that's out there today anyway. OK, a single family home is essentially where it's just built for one family to live in. OK, I know some of you all have multiple families in one home, but again, they call it single family homes. OK, now this is going to be a game changer because we still don't know if they're going to essentially allow all three credit bureaus to give scores and then they just choose two out of the three or if they're just going to completely just remove one of the credit bureaus. We'll see and we'll most definitely keep you posted. From 2013 to 2023, every single family loan that they purchase are run through the two new models. And as you can effectively see how the loans would have been scored and how the new models have been in place at that time. He said that FHFA will have a, the data for the Vantage Score 4.0 model out by the middle of this year, which is 2024, and the FICO 10T model shortly thereafter. This is the first time that any type of regulation or any type of company has essentially says, hey, listen, we're actually going to have them side by side and make a decision. Because let's be totally honest, and I want, to, I want you guys to understand what's happening here. They're not just rolling out Vantage Score just to roll it out. They're simply saying, hey, listen, Vantage Score is on to something, and it's all about money. Not, not the money that you think, like they're being greedy or something like that, because as we all know, Vantage Score is free. And let's be clear on something. Credit Karma is not the only company that uses Vantage Score. Credit Karma is the most popular company, but you also have Credit Wise. Yeah, that's for, that's given to you for free by Capital One. So if you have a Capital One credit card and you have a credit and you have yours and you can see your score through Credit Wise, that is your Vantage Score. And it's also Wallet Hub, Credit Sesame, and also if you go to Equifax.com and you get their plan, that's a Vantage Score. If you go to TransUnion.com. That's a Vantage score. So again, this isn't something that Credit Karma just uses. This has been out for years. But let's go ahead and see if you're going to meet the new qualifications. Now, this is an article directly from the Federal Housing Finance Agency. I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can see this a little bit better, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off with the recent updates, just really quick. So now on February 29th, the FHFA announced several updates in related to the implementation of the updated enterprise credit score requirements. All that it means is is that they're considering new credit scores, okay? Now, here's the deal, though. You guys got to understand that this has been going on. This isn't something that's brand new. This is something that's been going on for quite some time. Back in October 24, 2022, FHFA announced the validation and approval of the two new credit score models. 
FICO 10T and Vantage 4.0. So again, before the models even came out, they've already was working on this, okay? And then, of course, March 2023, they gave an update of the implementation plans and opportunities for stakeholder engagement, okay? Then that went on to be in uh, September 11, 2023, FHA, on September 11, 2023, FHFA announced the next phase of ongoing public engagement for the updated enterprise credit score requirements. Then that takes us to where we are right now, of course, February 29th, 2024. And then we can go in and see right up in here to better support market participants as they engage in the transition. FHFA further announced that the enterprises would accelerate the publication of the historical data specific to the Vantage Score 4.0 model to early in the third quarter of 2024, while continuing to work towards publication of similar data to support the transition to the FICO 10T model. So long story short, since they're really pressing hard on FICO 10T, Vantage Score says this is finally our opportunity to show that we can give you all more clients, okay? Now remember, I mentioned that earlier. Now watch where this is going. Now Freddie Mac just recently put this on their website right here. It says February 29th, key updates for credit score model and credit scores initiatives. And it also mentions the publication of historical Vantage Score 4.0 has been accelerated, all right? Now this is just on the Freddie Mac site. Let me show you all on the other site as well. Give me one second here. All right, now we see that we're on Fannie Mae's uh, website as well too. Let me zoom out a bit, all right? And it says right here, Credit score models and reports initiative. All right. So it says Fannie Mae tests and validates required credit score models for accuracy, reliability, and integrity. Okay. Again, this is on their website, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. These are the people who will actually you know, make the regulations for the entire mortgage industry. Now, why are they doing this again? Because Vantage Score says that there's over 40 million people that can qualify for homeownership or just really have a credit score in general. And a lot of those people, 30 to 35 million of those 40 million will be able to go into homeownership. Let's take a look at the score chart. So you can see right here that everything starts at 300, but this is gonna be a huge difference. Watch this. So FICO says that there are 16% of people that have a credit score between 300 and 579, but this is with the FICO score. That's what everyone has been going by. But with Vantage score, there are people, only 5% of people have a credit score between 300 and 499. This is what they're interested in. The difference between how many people are between 500 and let's just say 660, all right? And compared to FICO side, that's going to be between 580 all the way up to 740. Now, you can see the huge difference between how many people are between 500 and 600 versus 580 and, 69, and 669. Now, watch this. This 21% of people is this is what the mortgage industry is interested in giving people mortgages that have lower credit scores as opposed to uh, FICO. Now, this does now this could mean a lot of different things. This could mean that hey, Vantage score is taking more risk or this could also mean that FICO's being a little you no know, too strict. So, either way, they're saying, "Hey, listen, the only reason why we are not getting more people into home ownership is simply because they don't meet the score qualifications. But Vantage Score says, what are you talking about? There's a lot of people that meet the score qualifications. You all just have to be open to a different scoring model. So now let me show you all how the Vantage Score 4.0 compares to Vantage 3.0 as well as the older FICO score models as well. So you can see right here what matters to Vantage score 4.0 as well as the current FICO models. Because again, now Vantage 4.0 has already been out. But the thing is, is that the FICO 10T is the one that's not out yet, okay? So now, utilization rate. We all know this is how much of your credit cards you're actually using, okay? This is very important across the board. But this is what's going to change, the trended data, okay? So essentially how your utilization got there. This does not impact any of the older models, but this is essentially lining directly up with the FICO 10T model. And that's what Vantage Score is saying. If you all are interested in using the FICO 10T model, we can do the same thing. Right. And so now they're saying, OK, we got that information. Then let's go into collection accounts. OK, this completely ignores paid collection accounts. Are you guys seeing this? This is a game changer. This is going to ignore paid collection accounts. 
This means that no more having to do a pay for delete, no more having to hope something gets removed or disputed or all this other crap that people be talking about that most of the time don't work, right? Or you trying to do something that's illegal or whatever the case may be. All you have to do now is make an arrangement with these companies. It can be a settlement. It can be a payment in full. It could be a payment plan. I'm getting excited about this because there's so many people that have put their goals to the side simply because they could not afford to pay a collection or they could not uh, get the score that they needed by a certain amount of time, right? But now you're going to be in position to do that. Let's keep going. It's going to ignore medical collection accounts that are less than six months old. It's also going to weigh unpaid medical collections less than other types of collections, okay? Now, of course, the other models as well too, FICO score eight and FICO score nine, it would ignore small nuanced accounts that had an original balance of less than $100. A lot of people didn't even know that. Then it treats medical collection accounts, including those with a zero balance like other collection accounts. Pretty much, we all knew what that meant. If you, This is why so many people on YouTube were saying, don't pay your collections. They were saying that for the, the they were, listen, people say don't pay your collections because they're saying it's not going to affect your score. I, I get that. That's the old model, though. They have to understand that. That's the old way of doing things, okay? Now, again, what they didn't tell you, though, the legal ramifications if you did not pay your collections. Now, I know most people don't get taken to court because a lot of people got collections. But people that have collections at a certain amount, they do take people to court. I keep telling y'all this stuff. And it also talks about tax liens or judgments. Now, we do know that tax liens and judgments, they've removed those from credit reports back in 2017, actually a little bit before that time as well. But they can have a significant impact. But Vantage 4.0 says it's less important than before, but can still have a negative impact. Now, Vantage Score says it's less important than before, but can have a significant impact. You don't even have to worry about this, guys, because this is not even on your credit reports anymore anyway, okay? Okay. Now, for those of you who have not seen my FICO 10T video, go watch that. But again, if you want just a quick little piece of what it's going to be, I'll show you right here. Short version is the T in FICO 10 stands for trended data. OK, and this just means your utilization rate starts to remember. According to Vantage Score, trended credit data reflects patterns in borrower behavior. These behaviors are generally tied to how you borrow and repay credit over time. This can include how your utilization rate and the amount of available credit trends over time. So how is this different from other scoring models? For some credit scoring models, your utilization rate doesn't have a memory. In other words, credit scoring models generally consider your most recently reported utilization rate when calculating your credit score. However, the new Vantage score model will incorporate up to two years worth of trended data into its scoring model. It's the first tri-bureau credit scoring model to do so. But what's most important to remember is that, it, is that practicing good credit habits, such as making full on-time payments, remains strongly influential when it comes to your credit score, no matter what the model is. Now, also, you guys are seeing my FICO 10T video, how they say if you make multiple payments towards your credit cards, that will actually help your score as well. So again, this is going to put a lot of people in position to go into homeownership. And let's be honest, it's a matter of time before the mortgage industry not only sees a huge increase, but that the auto loan industry is going to start saying, hey, Maybe we should do the same thing. Are we missing out on money as well? Are we missing out on clients because we couldn't give a certain interest rate? Are we missing out on car buyers because we could not reach a certain monthly payment and they walked out the door? Now they'll be able to get more of that business as well. I mean, personally, I don't know if credit cards are going to jump on this because credit cards, there's no collateral. So if you max out a credit card and you just don't pay, there's nothing for them to come and get. But with the mortgage, if you don't pay, they obviously have the house. If you don't pay a car, they obviously know where the car is. They tracking these cars nowadays, too. But either way, we'll keep you guys posted. If you all like this video, you're most definitely going to love the next one. And I'll see you there.